So this has been some really big news as well. Maybe maybe bigger than the bundles even, but probably affects a, a few less people, uh, but it's growing. So Amazon AWD, uh, which is Amazon Warehousing and Distribution, is facing capacity challenges. So it's leaving many sellers unable to send in inventory. Sellers are receiving messages that AWD is full and some are being forced to send inventory to alternate fulfillment centers. So anybody not familiar with AWD, it's essentially Amazon's 3PL that they created. And then they introduced the inbound placement fee to try to get you to use AWD essentially. So what people have been doing, instead of sending directly to FBA and paying the inbound placement fee, they send to Amazon AWD then you can send it all to one location and don't have the inbound placement fee. Mm -hmm. But people have been seeing uh, this message here. Sorry, at this time, we don't have the space available for your inventory. Uh, but even if they do have the space for your inventory, often they are reassigning you to a different region than what you actually selected. So if you selected the West Coast, they might reassign you to Central or vice versa, depending on where they have storage. And so I don't use AWD. Does that is that going to affect your cost on shipping, or is it like, oh, sorry, we we don't have space. Just go ahead and send it here instead. And we'll take care of it. So it's a lot cheaper to send into AWD. Like it can be a fraction, uh, like at least half, if not a quarter or a sixth of the price to send it into FBA because you don't have to split up your shipments or uh, if you don't split up your shipments sending to FBA, then you pay that super high inbound placement fee, which you don't have to pay that for AWD. Right. So essentially, since AWD is full or mostly full, people are going to have to revert back to sending direct to FBA or find a 3PL or something yeah. like that. Yeah. And it's uh, super annoying because... Amazon is essentially trying to force people to use AWD with the inbound placement fee. And so then people are moving it. that way. And now, now you can't send an AWD. Yeah. Surprise. Yeah. And you know, I've seen lots of my clients, they've really started to lean into this AWD and they're, you know, for the most part, it's been an enjoyable experience for them from what I've, from what I've heard, you That's know, good. they're taking a lot of the legwork out of having to do multiple shipments and, just having your inventory on the drip versus mm -hmm. constantly refilling it, right? Like just sending those larger shipments into that. And now that they're full and get, hitting them with the in, inbound placement fee, that's going to be tough. That's going to be really tough. And one of the things that I'm seeing out there right now is AWD is even struggling to keep the drip going from the, from AWD into FBA. And we're not even in Q4 yet. And yeah, that's yeah. kind of something that's extremely concerning to me. I'm, I had a meeting with a client yesterday. And he's like, AWD can't keep up with the amount of shipments that I need to keep sending over into FBA. And I'm going into a low stock status every second, third day. And there wow. were five days where we're steady five days out from being out of stock consistently. And it's like, well, how do you, right? All that impacts your delivery time, your conversion rates, all those kinds of things. So it's like... I Let's not forget that Amazon then charges you for having low stock. <laughs> right. Exactly. You mentioned that one. Yeah, that's right. And like yeah. they're, they're putting all of that on. That's all coming from inside the business, right? That you have no yeah. control over. They yeah. built the system to say, go over here, use this. It's going to work great. And now the infrastructure is just not there. Yep. Does, does it work better if you have it switched on so you're manually um sending stuff over to FBA as opposed to having the automatic drip on? So from what I've heard is you get charged an additional fee if you want to manage it yourself. So Amazon the says, front door. yeah. So oh. what Amazon says is, Hey, we'll take care of it. We know you're, we know us. you're run rate. Be fine. Trust us, right? Trust us. And uh, we're from Amazon and we're here to help. Yeah. <laughs> well, from, what I, I know, you don't get charged extra to send the boxes manually. You get you get charged the same fee regardless. It's a small, uh, basically like a shipping oh, okay. and handling fee. Um, so you, they, they shouldn't be charged extra unless that's something that's recently changed that I haven't seen yet. I mean, I kind of consider that placement fee extra. The 
the inbound placement fee. Yeah. Yeah. The, well, the inbound placement fee for sure. Were, were you talking about uh, Neil going from AWD to FBA or were you talking? Yeah. About- and the run rate that you send it in. So like if you want to send in additional inventory more than what Amazon thinks should be on the drip, the, mm-hmm. he said that they were going to hit you with the fee. Hmm. Where did you hear that from? Directly from a client. Okay. That, that sounds like that because in my experience, that hasn't been the case uh, because you can send in extra and they, they actually recommend that you keep an eye on it in the beginning be, until the algorithm learns your product enough to be sending enough in. So it'd be kind of weird that they're recommending you watch it and send in extra if you need to, and then charging you extra for it. It should be the same fee. Maybe he's just seeing the fee when he does it manually and not noticing that they're charging the fee when it's automatic they're just hide it. <laughs> or or he's seeing uh the fee for having too much inventory in there in awd oh just an fba an fba so like yeah, yeah so he's so, the low stock in fba so he's getting hit with that low stock fee that you were kind of talking about and then, that yeah, part i would hope they he's got tons oh so with that low f- inventory fee, I would request a, a reimbursement on that yes, and point out that you've got all the stock in AWD. You're not low on inventory. Right. And and y'all are in control of that. Yeah. And because they, they did say that they would reimburse supposedly automatically, but we all know how that goes. But oh, they yeah. They did say they would reimburse if it was their fault for the low inventory, like not receiving stock in time. Mm-hmm. And yeah, so it'll be interesting going into Q4 with this, like, um, and especially like you just mentioned the algorithm learning your run rate for that. Like we all see, you know, two to three X spikes come December, come Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And I wonder how Amazon's algorithm will keep up with that. Yeah. I mean, this is the first year, this is the first year it's been in full cycle for a Q4, right? Like last year we didn't have it. It was in place last year, but it was super beta and they weren't really pushing it. They started pushing it when they put in the inbound placement fees. Huh. They, they got what they asked for. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and regardless, you know, I would keep, keep an eye on your stock uh, just like it's a normal 3PL. I would not trust the algorithm to handle it, especially since we're going into Q4 you're going to probably know better how your product spike in Q4 than that algorithm is. Um, especially now as AWD is still technically in beta and they're growing and definitely keep an eye on it. Send things in manually to make sure you're not running out of stock. And, and they don't necessarily know if you're going to run a special or a sale that's really going to spike your sales. Right. So when you're going to do something like that, you're going to want to go in there and manually push more inventory over. 